Hi, this is Trisha Morris here at Club Scrap with the Literature Collections Pocket Planner Project. It's a beautiful stitch-bound album, and when you open it, it has a cute little library pocket right inside in the inside front cover. And then it has these angled pocket pages that are formed by uh, preparing some folded 6x9 envelopes in a very special way that also create some secondary pockets. So it's a very clever book structure. It's a very basic stitch that even if you're brand new to book binding, I'm going to take you through this step by step and you'll be able to make a beautiful book for yourself. Let's get started. The first thing we'll do is get, well of course you have your kit and you'll have some instructions on our blog, um, but you will be doing a little bit of trimming to get things started. Um, the first thing we need to do is take the red papers that are designed to be the outside front covers and we're going to place them both into the trimmer horizontally at the same time. And right now they're six and three quarter inches long. We're going to give them a little chop at six and a half inches. And what that does is takes off a quarter of an inch from each of these pieces. Do you want me to do this? Because I made an error. And I apologize to you. Uh, one little cut though, um, when we discovered the error, the kits were already packed. One trim with a quarter of an inch off and the covers will fit perfectly. And again, my apologies to you. Lots of measurements happen around here at Club Scrap and we don't always get them 100% perfect. The other thing you need to do is take the sheet of pre-printed cut-aparts that we've also included and um, trim those into separate elements. Now I like to remove the smallest pieces first um, and sometimes just do a little neat and up cut around the outside perimeter if necessary and you'll see the tiny little registration marks that are on this piece. Those small, small um, little hash marks and that will indicate to you where these elements will be separated. So go ahead and grab your nice Fiskars guillotine trimmer or if you must a ruler and a craft knife and separate the finishing elements for um, the cut aparts that will go into your book. There I have all of the little pieces trimmed apart and later on I'll even go back with an ink applicator and some club scrap earth ink and ink the edges of these elements. Um, they're going to be a great addition to help me finish up my book and I'll take my two covers, the two red cover that you, covers that you trimmed six and a half inches long and we'll set those aside and prepare our inside pages. For this step it's best to have a bone folder of any size, this is kind of a long big one, but um, we're going to be folding all of the inside pages in half horizontally. So there are dark craft, craft light craft, and ivory. So if you just take one of the pages, they've been trimmed with the grain direction, so you should be good to go there. Make sure the pages are perfectly aligned before you make a nice crease. You can use your fingertip to start out the crease, but then always burnish a nice crisp fold uh, with your bone folder. And you'll repeat that with all of the pre-cut pages that are the same size. There will be the dark craft, the light craft, and the ivory. Once you have all of those pages neatly folded in half with the creases burnished, take the, the envelopes that we've included. There are three of them in the collection. Close the flap, and if you like, you can also take the prongs here and close the envelope completely. So just so it stays out of the way. Then also fold these in half, and you can fold them so that the flap is on the inside of the fold. Um, it's not wrong to do it the other way, it's just the way that I did it in my sample and people always ask. <laughs> so I will tell you that I'm folding it with the flap on the inside and do that for the remaining envelopes as well. Here I have a beautiful stack of folded inside pages and folded inside envelopes. There's a little bit of work we still need to do to prepare our pocket pages. We need to add that little angle um, so we can double the duty of the pockets that we have here. So to do that you'll need a ruler and cutting, let's see, a ruler, a craft knife, and a cutting mat, and a pencil. And so for starters, let's open one of the envelopes and let's orient it so that the flap is on the left and then the other side is on our right and it's open. Let's take a pencil and just mark the top crease right here. That's just so we can see it. And then with our ruler, we'll measure up one and three quarter inches from the bottom edge of the envelope. So that's the bottom right corner, one and three quarter inches up using our grid ruler. Now this is kind of a measure once, repeat sort of a thing. So for the second envelope, make the mark at the top center crease, line them up, and use this first one as a template. And then you can mark the same exact spot, one and three quarters of an inch up from the bottom edge without having to measure it again. And the same thing for the third envelope. 
marking the top center. Line them up along the bottom edges so that you can pass along the location of the measurement. With the two marks made, take your grid ruler and align it onto the cutting mat with that center mark at the top and the little notch mark you made at the bottom. Press firmly onto the grid ruler with your hand, I'm with your non-dominant hand. Starting with the blade away from you, bringing it toward you, press firmly and you're removing at the top or the top right triangle from this page. If you look at the envelope, it's the bottom right corner. It's all, it's all about orientation. And then you repeat that for the remaining two envelopes. And then take all of your pages and the next step is going to be to pierce them for stitching. Now there are two ways you can go about doing that. The traditional way and the new way. So let me just give you a view of the traditional way. Um, and the way that I'm really excited to share with you. Um, the measurements for piercing each individual page are the following. So I'll just, while I do this, I'll take my ruler and uh, open the page so that the ridge side of the fold is facing down. That allows me to rest my ruler up against the fold and that way I can uh, really line everything up nicely. Okay, the first one is at a half inch. So I'll pierce into a cork board with some kind of a piercing tool. You can use a thumbtack or a push pin, a needle, all kinds of things. And there is a needle included in your project kit. And the next one is at one and a half, two and a half. And then it's easy to remember the last three, four, five, and six. And you really wanna make sure that those pierces land right in the um, fold of your page. And then once you have one page done, you can actually nest this into another page and or pages, actually, you can do more than one page at a time and then pierce through the layers using the first page always as your template. So that's the traditional way, but there's another way. It's actually not new, but um, it's just a new uh, device that I've developed that will be available in a few weeks from Club Scrap. So depending on when you're watching this video, just check to see if it's available. I've taken my grid ruler and I've created lines that represent every piercing hole on the top and bottom edge of the page. So those lines are at zero, a half, one and a half, two and a half, four, five, and six, and then the end of the paper should be at six and a half. And I'm using um, the stitching cradle that I uh, created and you can, like I said, you can check to see if it's available at clubscrap.com. Um, so what you would do to pierce using this method is place your folded page into the cradle, take your template that you've made and align the bottom and top edges of your template with the paper, with the page, and then it's nice because the cradle holds your page in place and allows you to pierce directly into the fold without any missteps. Um, it's a huge, huge time saver, so now I can actually take a few more pages. I'm going to go with three, nest them together, and place them, make sure they're nice and aligned, place them in my cradle, get out my template, pop it in, make sure it's lined up top and bottom, and pierce down through all of the later layers and it will the, the hole will actually go right into the fold line. Um, and that will give you the outcome of your book a much better result by having those stitching holes exactly where they need to be. You'll do that with the remaining pages and also along the crease of all three of your envelopes as well. With everything pierced, now it's time to put our pages in the order in which we'll stitch them into our book. And this is really designer's choice, but I will once again share with you what I did. Um, so I'm starting out with a dark craft and then going to a light craft color, followed by an ivory, then an envelope. Now, as you're working with the envelopes, you always want to make sure that your pockets are opening in the same direction. Um, I learned this the hard way, just you have to be paying, paying attention. Um, then I'm going to go back to an ivory, an envelope, ivory, envelope, ivory. So I'm just alternating between ivory and envelope and then and, and reversing the order at the end. So to light craft and then dark craft. So all of my pages are in order and all of my stitching holes are beautifully aligned. And um, this is this is the great foundation for a wonderful book. We've included right in your project kit that came with your deluxe shipment, or you can always get it separately as long as it's available, um, a long piece of waxed linen thread. 
And we've also included a needle, and you'll want to thread, put the needle onto the wax linen, leaving a nice long tail. We will be using a single thickness of the thread. Um, the other thing that we'll be using right at this point is this beautiful ribbon. And um, I just love how it has this gold running through the middle of it. Take a scissors and simply trim the ribbon in half here. We need two lengths of it. And starting with the very first page of your first signature, each signature only has one page, I'm just going to take some two pieces of tape. And let's just take this one page here. There are six holes along the folded edge, the one at the top, and then there are two that are an inch apart. So we want to adhere, with a, just secure with a piece of tape, a ribbon between the second and third hole, and a ribbon between the fourth and fifth holes, like this. Okay, so what this helps us to is always remember this is the top of my book. Okay, um, it's just good for orientation, but this also creates a really beautiful binding. And we'll always layer our stitch pages beneath this. So this always needs to be up front. So especially if you're stitching a page for the first time, orientation is really important. Then with my needle threaded, I'll enter the very, very top hole. From the inside, I'm sorry, I'm going to go from the outside to the inside. So I'll have a tail on the outside of my folded page. Just pull that needle through. And so for your tail, we're going to uh, shoot for, you know, making about between three and five inches. You just don't want it in the way, but you don't want it to go away either. Um, then it's really easy. You're just going to stitch in and out every single hole. And when you exit, you'll bring the thread over the top of this ribbon and then exit again to the outside and go over the top of the ribbon. Notice I'm just pulling it length by length, re-enter, crossing over the ribbon. And then exit the last hole at the bottom. The wax on the uh, thread prevents it from getting tangled. And at this point, you can just kind of give it a pull across, and that automatically removes slack from the page. Now, what we would, in our mindset, be thinking about doing at this point is closing this signature, this page, forever. And um, then adding the second page beneath the first. Again, because our taped piece will always be on the top of our stack of pages. So when I hold it, I tend to grip it on this side and then leave the flap of the second page open and I'll enter the nearest hole of the second signature. So a signature is your page um, or a set of pages. And um, in this case, each, page, each signature only has one page. Now we proceed back up to the top, uh, following the same protocol in and out, in and out, and of course, going over the ribbon. and stop when you reach the top. Once you're here at the top again, and you've, you have double checked to ensure that there's no extra thread sticking out of the inside of your signature, of either one for that matter, and that you have a nice tight stitch connecting the first page and the second page down here at the tail of the book, um, everything looks really good. I'll make my first connecting stitch, which, or connecting knot in this case. I'll just take the thread tail, and then the thread that my needle is currently on and just tie it in a double knot. That's all there is to it. And now our first and second signatures are connected. Now you have the issue of the tail that's here. Sometimes you can just tuck it right in between the first and second page so it's out of your way. And now I'm ready to attach the third signature. And this is an ivory page. So I started with light craft, then, uh, sorry, dark craft, light craft, and now ivory. Notice the grip that I have. Um, Everything is closed, and my thumb is in between the last page I've most recently attached. I'm entering from the outside, going to the inside, and then pulling the thread in. And this will get easier as we go along. And following protocol, simply continue to stitch in and out over the ribbons as before until you reach the bottom of the signature.
All right, here I am at the bottom, and I'm checking to make sure I have no slack. Now, when you're doing this, be careful that you don't pull too hard because um, I fear that if you pull too hard, you could damage the paper. It's a little bit vulnerable at the fold, so I'm just removing a little bit of slack, and I'm holding the book so that the top is here in my left hand, or dominant hand, and my thread tail is up down at the bottom, coming out of the third signature. So take, <laughs> so take your needle and slide it beneath signatures one and two. There's a little stitch there that connects those. And I'm pointing out, I'm pointing toward the outside of the book when I do this, and you want to always be consistent in the way you do this stitch, which is called a kettle stitch. So I'm pulling it, and pulling it just until a small loop is formed. Then take the needle and drop it down through that loop and pull and that's going to create a simple knot that connects signatures two and three by going under the stitch beneath or between signatures one and two. So now I have a set of three pages connected. My next page is going to be uh, an envelope and again you want to make sure the pocket opens to the top so that when you put things into the pocket <clears throat> they don't fall out which is a very unfortunate thing so I'm gr I have my new grip here's my top and I'll enter the hole at the bottom of the signature and work my way in and out until I reach the top I've checked to confirm that I have no slack between any of my stitches you can see on the inside it's all pulled nice and snug but again being careful not to um, tear the paper and it's time for another one of those connecting stitches so I'm going to take the needle between signatures two and three there is a connecting stitch there so pointing to the outside of the book I do it the same way every time I'll pull until a small loop of thread forms and then just drop the needle through the loop and now I have a nice little knot Okay, so there are the first one, two, three, four pages or four signatures of the book. Each signature is attached the exact same way. Always remember to adjust your grip, opening only the last page and never opening the previous pages again or signatures again. I was re entering the nearest hole with your needle. Um, adjust the, the tail length of the needle as necessary because you'll just keep using more thread as you go. And I can't remind you enough to um, remove the slack in the thread before you make that knot, because once the knot is formed, you can't really go back and remove slack. Um, let me also say this. If this is the first time ever that you're stitching a handmade book, um, give yourself uh, a little bit of leeway. Cut yourself some slack, in a manner of speaking, um, because... You know, anytime you make something the first time, it's always a learning experience. And you'll only get better and better at this the more times you try. Um, this is a nice basic stitch, so it's a great uh, structure. If you are a beginner, don't be afraid of it. But also have reasonable expectations for perfection. Okay, I think uh, my books usually turn out pretty well now, but I've been doing this for a number of years. And um, you may, may just need to have a, get a few... Um, bookmaking experiences under your belt until you're truly satisfied with the outcome of your books. And continue on until all of the signatures are attached and when you reach the top of the final one I'll show you a little finishing trick. Well I had a little snafu uh, with technology <laughs> in between the last segment when I finished um, stitching the book and I wanted to show you a trick to finish things up. So I've, I'm faking this for you just to give you an idea of how simple this is. When you reach the end of the book, your needle will be at the, the bottom of the last signature and you'll perform that kettle stitch by bringing the needle between the previous uh, stitch just like you did in the past. And you make the loop and then pull it through and then you'll just do that again. Just do a, what we call a double Cattle stitch. I'm just faking this for you here to give you an idea of how that works. And um, then you can trim the tail with the scissors. Grab one of those. And then shove the end of the um, thread in, in between one of the signatures. And there you have your book. Now, I've already gone ahead and added the covers as well. And um, it's very easy to do. Um, my suggestion would be to use Club Scraps bookbinding glue. It's going to be the best bond on the material. And um, so I simply inked the edges of both sides of the mat board that we've included. And then um, once you have bookbinding glue on the 
outside page, so do it on the paper, um, you'll attach the cover and then make sure you just have a tiny little um, reveal on all three sides. Now when I'm applying glue to this page, the end paper, you'll want to protect the facing papers with, with something. So take a piece of scrap paper and place it in between before you apply glue to the surface. Then you can also ink the edges of the red panel that we've included. And I'll just show you how to apply the book binding glue to this. Um, you, you want to get it all the way to the outside edges and keep your paper off of your work surface if possible. Um, use a foam brush to spread the adhesive to the outside edges. Now the, there's a difference between spreading glue and painting with glue. And uh, painting is smaller motions and spreading is gonna be nice long sweeping motions. Make sure you get all of those outside edges with a nice coat of glue. I just kind of hold the paper in the palm of my hand and bend it a little bit to support it. Oh, I did get a little bit on the outside cover. My apologies. Okay, and then burn it, burnish that. Flip it over and apply glue to the other outside cover. And it really shouldn't take long. If you spend too much time on this, the glue will simply dry before you get a chance <laughs> to put it on your book. Okay, that went better. If you don't feel comfortable holding it in the palm of your hand while you apply the glue, just uh, have a separate sheet of paper that protects your work surface. Okay, <clears throat> now it's very important before you take the next step to evaluate where the top of your book is. So right now I have a pocket where I know that my book now is facing right side up. On my initial sample, I accidentally put the decorative piece on the back of the cover and upside down too. So just double check this before you apply. This is designed to fit right onto the cover, the front cover. Of course, you don't have to use this, but it's just kind of a nice decorative piece. Ink the edges if you like. On mine, going back to the finished sample, I just added the cut apart reed on the outside cover. And then uh, we have included the library card pockets and library cards. So you could use this to keep track of your reading lists or just take notes or just, it's a really cute embellishment. Um, I also took one of the circles, cut it out and then fold it in half to kind of act as a pull tab for the library card pocket. I have my once upon a time right here and then just went through and decorated with the remaining cut aparts that we've included in the project kit. There you have it, the end. I hope you like this project and if it's your first time making a book, never fear, you're gonna do just fine. Best wishes on this one.